Alright, making a response video to a TED Talks video. I'm going to answer a couple of questions asked by some web at 25.org. They're having some kind of celebration of the 25 year anniversary of the internet. So I'll get to the questions first and then I'll do my commentary. I suppose that's the way to do it, right? Um, so this is the prefacing statement. Marrying Tim Barnard Lee's vision, should be Sir, um, of the web as a place of equality, um, we're asking everyone, local distant community groups, neighbors and strangers, techies and technophobes, old and young, urban and rural, I mean, who wrote this? With any level of web literacy, well, she's, uh, did somebody who wrote this have any level of, like, sensible literacy? to create the content. So this is going to be, this is the content they're going to create. See, we're going to create the content by answering five inane questions. Yay! To do this, we are asking everyone to answer these five questions. Okay, number one. I'm sorry. I mean, I had to comment. <laughs> I mean, this is terrible. Uh, anyway, what <coughs> web projects have you encountered that leap borders and are conventional approaches to change people's lives. Leap borders are conventional approaches on the internet to change people's lives. What does this, you know, hashy thing web inspire mean? Is that some sort of Twitter talk? They don't have like a, you know, where you just answer the questions in a forum here or something or post a link to this video. None of that, you know, it's nothing like that. So I said, what, I have to go Twitter? Oh, it's sponsored by Twitter, no doubt. Yeah. Um, anyway. Um, so yeah, there's lots of good informational content. The world's a smaller place because of the internet. You know, the information superhighway part. Yeah, some of that exists. Some of that actually works. But most of the internet is just absolute rubbish. It's, it, doesn't, it changes people's lives by exposing you to the fact that most people suck. Anyway, two. What do you think are the best examples of creativity and artistic imagination on the web? Well, gee, you know, this is like such a... You know, this is done by some, some place. What's the name of this place? Uh, yeah, South Bank Center. And apparently they're all into this politically correct, artsy-fartsy bullshit. So that's why they threw this question in, no doubt. Um, there's a ton of brilliant artistic stuff on the internet, YouTube even. And yeah, it gets no views because it's not indexed rationally by the indexing company Google. Yeah, that's right. They don't index YouTube videos based on tags or any kind of real metadata. And so none of it's really findable in any kind of rational way. So you just kind of have to accidentally get somebody's tweet or something. Everything has to be seen by popular demand. <sighs> anyway. So I don't know what the best example. What, 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 you know, what is that? I'll, oh, my subjective opinion is. Uh, who cares? What examples of personal, corporate, or government online <laughs> action threatens the future of free, open, or universal web? Yeah, all of the action threatens it because none of the internet is being protected in any way from the unaccountable, the trolls, the, the thieves, the crooks. So yes, the corporate and government have all sold it out. This, the, what examples of personal action? I don't even know what that means. I mean, if, if, we, if we could cut out corporate and government and say CERN and some of these other organizations, I mean, CERN had the Internet in their hand, all right? A bunch of physicists, they had the thing in their hand, and they sold it out to the corporations. <laughs> I mean, you have to rent a domain name from a company now. It's just idiotic. What aspects of the web give you the greatest joy? Oh, jeez. Joy? I mean, is that really an appropriate word? I mean, I, I, you know, I like that there's information available. I don't like that the noise to signal ratio is about 95 to 1 or 5. Um, you know, it's just not good enough. It could be so much better. It's such a squandered medium. It's just being sold back out to the advertisers and the, and the networks. 
So, and the greatest worry. Well, yeah, the greatest worry has been the worry I've had ever since I got on the internet. And three days after I got on the internet, you started selling it to the corporations. Yeah, you sold it out. That's my greatest worry. Yeah, is that you sold it out to marketers, middlemen. Uh, you know, instead of a nice straight line between producer and consumer, yeah, you just put all the zigzags right back the frig into the game. Anyway, what does, <coughs> what ideas, projects, or schemes, <laughs> schemes, would you suggest we present at the festival? I don't know, maybe you could, uh, you know, sell uh, balloons for $17.58 each. I, you know, why scheme? You want to scheme? Anyway, to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the web, well, why, that's it. Why don't you just put a Google ad on everything? Why don't you put some ad? Ad works on, yeah, just put ad works on everything, okay, and then maybe somebody will get an idea and say, oh, wait a minute, yeah, that's how the whole internet's being run, is based on selling advertising, and the only people who are convinced by advertising are morons, so yes, essentially you're saying, let the morons drive the content, what a great plan. Uh, the internet's just another example of the, of the selfish, greedy sell-out mentality of the average lottery ticket buying moron. It's all quite depressing. <sighs> Maybe you could have a, you know, a blow out your brain booth. You know, and you could just pretend to blow out your brains because, yeah, what, what, what planet do we live on? Planet of the crooks, the shysters, the marketers, the racketeers. Shit. Excuse my French. All right, so now on to commentary. <laughs> yeah, now, now it's time for the commentary part. All right, well, number one, this whole website is lame as, well, lame as lame could be. Um, but, yeah, sponsored by, let's go to the sponsors, right? Sponsored by, yeah, a bunch of companies, right? Um, well, anyway, so, so look, i just make this point, you know, okay. So, anyway, so this Tim Barnard Lee guy, right? Sir, Tim Barnard Lee. Call him Web Inventor. Right, and this has always been kind of an exaggeration, all right? I mean, <laughs> there was an internet, right? And people communicated to their different servers on the internet, and they could download files. And those files could be text files, or those files could be all kinds of different kinds of files, zip files, all kinds of files. And what uh, Tim Barnard Lee did was he made the contribution of creating another layer on the internet where there would be a protocol for displaying content. And uh, so that's he came up with HTML, which is a tagged language, so that you could do bolding of text, and you could do put things in frames so they were separated, and so you could format the document or the content in a display mode that would be produced by a browser. So, you know, it's not exactly penicillin. I mean, it was an inevitable progression in the development of the communication network that you would have methods of display. And the, the real problem is, is that it did get stagnant. It did get stuck in this stagnant, dull HTML language that was kind of lame. And uh, until JavaScript showed up and other um, add-ons, um, it was pretty lame, you know. And then what happened when the add-ons got put on? You had Flash and these other PDF files, all this other stuff, and it was all proprietary. So they all had to make their money. Uh, so more, you know, bad incentives um, thrown into uh, what should be just a functional platform. Um, you know, huge efficiencies could have been done, except the browsers got controlled by companies like Microsoft. Um, you know, Internet Explorer. Uh, and they had their own incentives to control content um, display. Um, so yeah, all bad news. Um, you know, but okay. So credit what credits do, but let's you didn't invent the internet. It's just it's just really an exaggeration. So anyway, I had to 15 years ago, whatever. I had some forum and email style conversations with Tim Barnardsley. Um, he was pushing this idea of a semantic web, which is sort of like RSS feeds, 
Um, but it's about the metadata again, because meta tags, it was this way of tagging. So, so in his HTML code, he had something called a meta tag. And the meta tag was basically supposed to be an indexing tag for the content. So you would describe with keywords what the content was. And of course, everybody just lied and put porn, 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 porn in their tags. And so the tags became irrelevant because everybody just lied and no one was accountable. And so he was suggesting other mechanisms for creating a history to documents where they would be tagged in some sort of more reliable way with where they were created, who, where the original came from, this kind of stuff, which was reasonable, but still didn't have much to do with indexing, which I think is more important. You have to be able to find the content. Um, that's sort of the priority is that you, it's not on the internet if you can't find it on the internet. Yeah, so the invisible internet was became the problem and no one had a solution to that. So, anyway, um, yeah, I tried to convince him that what he's really got to worry about is Google and what he's really got to worry about is that we don't have a truly non-commercial um, indexing mechanism on the internet that has any reliability and so I had a proposal which was what is the who is which is using the who is database the domain ownership information as a place where you could put reliable tags and where you could punitively punish people for lying you know actually prevent liars from freely functioning on the internet which would be really a good idea <laughs> So anyway, this other guy, Jimmy Wales, I also had some conversations with in multiple forums. <laughs> and, uh, you know, very nice guy and all that kind of crap. I, you know, there was lots of talk back in the beginning of Wikipedia, whether this was some sort of answer to the content distribution problem. Because in a way, it could sort of, an encyclopedia could be used as an index. Um, and, you know, and I had my doubts that that's what it would turn into. And I'm sort of correct about that in the sense that you won't find links to um, YouTube videos on Wikipedia pages. You won't find, you know, as resources, um, you know, much in the way of links to anything but um, pretty dry um, academic papers. So it's not exactly um, much of an indexing tool. Um, but, you know, Wikipedia certainly has been a success and it's definitely a good thing to have and so um, I didn't see much future in it, but, you know, it's worked out. So anyway, um, yeah, but what can I say? Again, another guy I couldn't convince that, you know, that if we don't have an index for the Internet, you don't have nothing. The index is everything. And to let a corporation like Google control distribution and access is just such a huge mistake. And you can see it now, where they're, Google's identifying you, it's giving you different search results and it's giving other people. This is as bad a news as you can get on the internet. There's no honesty in the indexing. Um, they're serving ads to you based on what pages you've looked at on the internet. I mean, it's invidious and insidious and horrible and nobody's going to stop it. Because no one gives a rats something or other. And that can be seen by the dismal participation there will be in this project. So anyway, so yeah, that's why this is really quite irrelevant because no one cares and nobody's going to do anything and nothing will get fixed. And um, So anyway, this is the project page for the South Park Center and it's just this horrible, you know, one of these images that you can't turn off and then they give you a cookie warning, a big giant one here. And it basically says, accept and close. <laughs> you know, which is one of the, you know, this is what like the standards of the manipulation on the internet, you know, is accept and close. No other options. No, like, no f, f you close. No, just accept and close. I mean, you know, you're just kind of cliche crap when you do shit, stuff like that. We're using cookies. If you don't like it, well, too bad. But we're going to do it anyway. We can't even put in our cookie that you don't want to use cookies. No, you're going to have to disable cookies for this website in particular if you don't want us to cookie it to pieces. Which, cookies aren't that big a deal anymore. But, what, I mean, this is how far behind they are. But, I mean, accept and close. I mean, this is just right there. I mean, that's one of the things that needs fixing on the Internet. 
is buttons like accept and close. <sighs> Login, register, view basket. That doesn't sound too good either. <laughs> yeah, I have to log in, I have to register, and I have to buy something. Gee, great. So anyway, here's the Twitter page. And so they have a whole 110 followers, no, 170 followers, 110 following. I don't, what's the difference between a follower and a following? I don't know. But obviously that doesn't sound very good to me, those numbers. Um, but I guess that's what all this slashy numbery thing means. I guess this is some sort of Twitter jargon. Um, but yeah, I'm not a Twitter file, so no interest there for me. So here's the South Bank Center website that they provide a link to, the YouTube page. Absolutely no videos on the subject of this festival that's coming up in less than a month. Nothing here about it at all in a month. Um, <laughs> you know, not a single video on that subject. All this other reading Shakespeare and all this other kind of women of the world, jibber-jabber, all kinds of touchy-feely gay stuff. Um, but nothing about this internet stuff. <laughs> yeah, nothing, absolutely nothing here. No way for me to link to it. No way for me to post a uh, not, it's just nothing. I can't can't help you. They, they got nothing. So not too good. Um, and that's where we are. So I don't know if I need to say more. I do have an old website. I, I guess I could go there just for to see if it's still there. Um, called Do Not Go. So we'll type that in. Do not go. Uh, what? Dot com, right? <laughs> Whoops, not con, com. There we go. Now let's see where it goes. Let's see if it works. There, it's still there. Yay. It's a pretty old website. Um, so anyway, but there's this thing called the What Is Proposal. That should still work. <laughs> with any luck. But anyway, this is years ago when I was arguing with all these people about a better internet. How to save the internet and all that crap. And so I wrote up all this junk. Um, basically just pointing out that, uh, well, I mean, I didn't even point out the stuff that's really important. Let me see the date on this. Woo, 2001. Yeeks. That's the update. So the original is even older than that. Um, so look, the, the real key important thing to know here is that we have an internet financed by advertising. And that's what financed television. And we saw what television turned into. And it's just a fact of life, okay? Smart people are less likely to be persuaded to buy or click ads, especially ads with lizards on them with, you know, French hats on. It just doesn't work. And it works best on people of the, the dumber you are, the more likely you are to be persuaded by a cartoon to buy something. Um, it's just the way it is. It's like, you know, Smarter people don't buy lottery tickets. These are just facts of life. And so if you finance something through this mechanism, then the only content you're going to be paying for is dumb content. And that's why we need some other system to reward people for being creative or doing something socially constructive on the Internet. There needs to be some other mechanism of um, editorial commentary and editorial reward for content creation that doesn't have a commercial element. And nobody wants to do that. It's like people just don't see the value in public libraries. There isn't one on the internet. I mean, you got to realize we, we don't have any, we should have a public library style option on the internet. It shouldn't be run that way. It should be an option. You should have the option to go to the bookstore or to go to the library. We should have the choice and we don't have the choice because government's not providing the choice because the people aren't demanding the choice. And it's, I'm again, what you learn when you're on the internet is most people suck and that's the truth of it. Unfortunately people suck. That's why the internet sucks 
That's why the world sucks, is because people basically suck. So anyway, uh, till the next edition of You People Friggin' Suck. Yeah. It's all very depressing. I am, yeah, I think I am depressed. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a very depressing day. Bunch of rape apologists, bunch of this, but you people are all freaking insane. You just, you don't just suck, you're just stupidly sucky. Eek. Eek. Eek.